Hey, Brass Facts here. I know, I know, I, I drug my feet on this one, but finally we're getting to it. Comms and advanced comms, specifically in the context of preparedness with the leaning towards the more extreme scenario. Anything from talking with the boys during a camping trip to, well, talking with the boys during an extreme camping trip, the end of times. Today, we're gonna go over what you might call advanced basic terms for radios, or maybe it'd be basic advanced terms. I I don't know. You understand radios, but the more advanced concepts might confuse you, or maybe the implementation of them might be a bit nebulous. This video will heavily focus on the more tactical environments, shit hit the fan, boog, whatever you want to call it, uh, but can obviously be scaled back. Like many things, we can prepare for the most extreme scenario and then adapt it to much less parkour scenarios. This video was originally going to be a complete video about configuring advanced radios, so P25, DMR, but that video got really bloated with this, so we split it off into two videos. The focus here will be entirely on UHF and VHF communications. Uh, HF is for military and bored boomers that want to talk to Cubans, and you already use a cell phone every day. This video is sponsored by uh, nobody. Uh, nobody. Mainly just the subscribe star people and you guys for putting up with me uh, video after video. So I don't know. Uh, help sponsor this video by buying this patch. It's a cool frog. It's got a gun. It's kind of based to shit. I don't know. Please buy my patch. Also, as an aside, uh, there's I use my radios every single rain trip, but I realized I don't actually implicitly save that footage. So, uh, yeah, this is just random B-roll I had in my folder called random B-roll. So, yeah, sorry. Before keying up your push to talk, there's actually some major considerations that you need to, uh, well, consider. Op 4 type. Op 4 stands for opposing force, basically the, the other group that could influence your decision to use your radio. This is something actually very much devoid in online discussions because, as per usual, everyone assumes everyone is prepared for exactly what they're preparing for. And then you're going to go ahead and wreck your entire afternoon in an online discussion because you and four other dudes, yes dudes, there, there, there are no chicks in this community, spent the entire time talking past each other on two separate discussions. Your ability or to use, and in some cases not use, comms gear is highly dependent on your environment and specifically here, the opposing force. I'm going to broadly divide it into two camps. There's obviously nuance here. Peer adversaries and being overmatched. Peer is other civilians, right? That They have the same technology as you. They are your peer. And then military capability, aka state-funded forces, the government. While civilians can gain a lot of capability in this day and age, it will never ever match what is available to an entity that was willing to dedicate thousands of people, billions of dollars of equipment in motion, and the most complex apparatus ever devised by man to drop multi-billion dollar bombs on mud huts to feed a dude with half a belt on his PKM that shot maybe five total rounds over the fob so he wouldn't seem like a coward. In that context, yeah, it becomes obvious that maybe we need some qualifiers when discussing that compared to a civilian. Talking in broad terms, most military operational units have a fairly complex multi-bajillion dollar ISR network and system designed to either inhibit your ability to use these devices, intercept, or even listen in on your traffic, and in some cases, triangulate and find your exact position before you even let go of that PTT button. I cannot speak to specifics because that ain't my thing, dog. but just look at ongoing and recent events regarding man-portable radio systems in a war environment. Trust me, I think you'll find some stuff and you'll get a strong indicator of what state actors are, but also are not capable of doing against commercial and military style radios. The Ukraine war is a interesting case where we see both stupidly high tech radios and radio related equipment, while in the same case, we're seeing unrestricted uses of Baofangs and Baofang analogs uh, on the front lines. That might be an interesting topic for another day, or maybe not. Some of you are gonna be pretty blue balled here, but this channel is about preparedness against other civilians. So that will be the end of the discussion thus far, talking about going up against a overmatched opponent. I talk about civilians here, it's just what I do. So, moving the video in that direction, what do we have to worry about against other civilians when using a radio? Generally speaking, nothing. Oh, put, put down the pitchforks, put down the pitchforks. Let me explain. Despite what the hardcore community says, the vast majority of preppers most complex form of SIGINT is pressing a scam button on their Baofang. Their Baofang that probably isn't even programmed. Much like with night vision, we overassume because all the influencers and dudes on the internet have everything. So we assume everyone has everything. 
but even some basic napkin math on, for example, night vision sales, and more specifically lamb demand, seems to indicate, okay, maybe we're exaggerating a bit. Probably not everyone has night vision. We can apply that a little less effectively to comms. Most people do not have comms. Of the subset that do, most have no idea how to use them. And fewer still have anything more complex than a programmed Beofang or analog to that. Seriously, I'm still watching tactical videos on the internet of the most Gucci dripped up motherfucker, and they're still running fake prick 152s and clamshells. Now, those, cl those aren't actually that bad, but the point still stands. In this context, we as a community still have discussions regarding civilians instantaneously triangulating your position because you queued up on 10 watts instead of 5 watts on your radios. Just because something is unlikely doesn't mean you should ignore it. And a fucker with a Beofeng pressing a scan button is still absolutely a viable threat. Especially if you too are an unsecure radio. There are absolutely people that can do the things I mentioned above, and survivor, and survivor bias is certainly a thing. I just want to illustrate this ongoing narrative that in a near peer, civilian on civilian scenario, queuing up your radio is probably not an instantaneous death wish, as so often depicted. It will be a calculated risk, as it always is. But we are preparing, and preparing being, means being smart, and being smart means minimizing risk. And that brings us to the second aspect you must consider when you queue up your PTT, your push to talk. The type of communication you are transmitting, and the information within that package. We can roughly divide it up into three types. I don't know, I made these up, it, it doesn't matter. We have the line of sight immediate communication. This is what I would consider squad level communication. And this is gonna sound a lot like your COD lobby. You're not gonna use proper radio etiquette, you're just gonna yell into your radio, basically doing tactical shit with the boys. Yeah. Hey dude, check that window. Hey, move. I'm moving, cover me. Moving, set, glass that ridge line on the left. Hey, you, peel right. No, your other right. You know, stuff like that. The window in which this information is remotely relevant is minutes, and the data contained within is so nebulous that should your communication lines be completely compromised, the consequences are not disastrous. Especially in an actual fight or near fight scenario, the benefits and upsides of using a radio, even if completely compromised, vastly outweigh the downsides preventing blue on blue, being able to maneuver beyond shouting in line of sight, not having to shout, you name it. It does a lot for your team's survivability in a fight. This is where I think something like a Beofang smokes the concept of no radios. Radios are a force multiplier in the literal sense of the word. They multiply the effectiveness of a given force. None of that 6-5 arc is of force multiplier bullshit. This will actually make your group of four dudes significantly more effective than without the radio. The second tier is what I would consider what most people imagine radio comms to be like. Mid-tier, mid-range information. This is a very broad category, and will make some more sense if once we touch on our last category. This is where anecdotally, I hear all the memes about kids during an airsoft match telegraphing their entire movement on their unsecure lines and can be completely wrecked over it. This communication is much more information packed due to the very nature of it. Two teams communicating and coordinating over several miles, maneuvering and coordinating a hit, multiple parties in several buildings conveying information while observing, squad team leaders will often request sit reps in this fashion, and if that radio line is compromised, it would not be too hard to paint a picture of unit strength, capability, and maybe even location and tasking by listening in over the course of several hours. This information, while obfuscatable, Wow, that took a couple tries. Via code and smart radio usage, still does present OPSEC and positional issues on unsecure lines. This is where encryption begins to strongly make a case for itself, as you can simply speak plainly and avoid confusion without compromising yourself. The number of times I've done something like land nav, where one group is talking about one thing and one group is talking about a completely different thing, and chaos completely ensued, happens more often than I would like to admit. Code words, obfuscation, and god forbid some kind of pen and paper security system, and life gets really miserable really fast. And if you're not on top of it, or maybe if it's time sensitive, and people are annoyed and hungry, shit goes to shit really quickly. When we get to long range comms, this is where hardware or software encryption virtually becomes mandatory. Now we can use OTP systems, but there are very few ways to convey this information without an extremely complex system that is both time consuming, error prone, and frankly just a giant pain in the rear. Be it requesting a QRF from your community, time-sensitive information regarding an unknown force observed, even something like a SALT or a SALUTE report, which contains very little compromising information, can typically be enough to alert the party in question that they are compromised if they have a comms dude monitoring the waves. A perimeter forward OP passing time-sensitive information like large-scale observed movements 
the list goes on, it would just be nice to talk on the radio without having to obfuscate it. Once again, radio discipline is key, and you can do a lot to mask what you're saying if you are unencrypted, or simply talking less to reduce intercept time. Keep your message short, keep your transmission on the lowest viable power setting. But ultimately, without just insane levels of obfuscation, fake messaging, coding, and more, you're gonna let some intel through. Most importantly, if you haven't practiced this stuff often, you're just gonna confuse the fuck out of all parties involved. Not all teams and groups will require this level of communication. Some teams might just stick with line of sight tactical communication. Some teams might do a lot of tactical communication, a little bit of mid-range communication, and just not even have the capability for long range. The flip side of this is you might use all of these communication levels, but due to your understanding of the vulnerabilities of these different things, you might realize, ooh, I am up against an advanced op 4 and I'm not encrypted. I'm gonna limit myself to only line of sight communication, or I need to up my game in terms of uh, voice obfuscation, uh, masking, code, you name it, right? Uh, or you might completely decide to omit information instead of phoning back and command, essentially, right, the other people in your unit about BDAs, Intel, whatever, you might just leave that until you get home. Okay, I've mentioned encryption like 12 times now. Let's get into encryption. It is a very misunderstood subject. That being said, encryption is a virtually no downside solution to solving a lot of the issues above. And all it costs is your sanity. To touch on government stuff again, I know I said I'm not gonna touch on government stuff, we're gonna touch on government stuff. There is some worry that encryption has been functionally zero-dayed and backdoored, uh, which allows for some end results that can compromise the original encryption. We've seen stuff like this in many other sectors where the NSA, intelligence agencies, whatever, have built-in vulnerabilities or backdoors that break allegedly unbreakable systems. So who knows anything is possible. But the reality is for your little radio, especially if you encrypt it yourself, to be functionally stuxnetted by, you know, three-letter agency of choice is incredibly unlikely. This is an ultra-complex software, it's a key. In reality, these systems are pretty safe. If we move over to what I would call, was calling, you know, near-peer, other civilians, we get to the point where encryption is 100%, without question, unable to be cracked. This allows for a freedom that simply does not exist with non-encrypted systems. You can gain basically this level of security via one-time pads, OTPs. But OTPs are really slow and simply do not work for certain scenarios and need a lot of practice to really work. If you have a bunch of OTP pads but you've never done it, uh, you're gonna be fucked. It's gonna be hilarious and I'd love to watch. The biggest Achilles heels of encryption is how annoying it is. It's not that effective encryption devices don't exist. They do, but you were never meant to have them. So most of them are used, most of them are incredibly expensive and rare, and all of them cost more than the radio. So you're typically gonna actually have someone else encrypt your radio for you, which means you need to send it back to him every time when you wanna add a new radio or change keys, or you're gonna have to set up some weird jank thing with an Arduino, uh, some programming, and, and then half the time it doesn't work, so you need to troubleshoot it for a couple days. Regardless, at some point you're gonna figure it out, it's worth noting, encryption doesn't prevent others from detecting outgoing communication. It simply masks the communication or makes it unreadable, so to speak. The weaknesses of encryption are inherent to all radio-based systems, and there's no real flaw in using it. Now I need to talk about digital versus analog radios. This is a major point of confusion, and I get to witness full-blown internet arguments on my Discord and YouTube channel where people make the fundamental assumption that DMR means digital and P25 means analog. I'm gonna get heavily into this when I actually show you guys how to program these things and God forbid key one of these with anything you're buying both. They're, they're both. They're, most radios are digital and analog if you're at this tier. A radio signal is a radio signal. The only difference is how it's transmitted. Functionally, waveforms that mimic zero and ones are digital or traditional ones are considered analog, right? Typically, if you have a radio outside of very short range communication for fun, when you're dicking around with the boys, you're going to want to be in digital. Digital has a ton of advantages, ranging from clarity, ease of encryption, lower data size, so longer range, less distortion, you name it. The only real downside of digital is that it's going to be slightly laggy, but who cares? You're using a radio. Regardless, if you are encrypted using a fancy boy radio, you're going to run digital and then potentially switch to analog when you want to talk to your Baofeng homies. Because once again, Baofengs can receive digital signal, it just doesn't know what to do with it. Ironically, um, I'm partially convinced, here, here's a brass fax fucking schizo theory, but I've seen this discussion several times. I think people think that radios are encrypted by default because when they queue up, their Baofeng can't understand it. Uh, yeah, you're just transmitting digitally, right? 
Okay, cool. I think we have that worked out. Let's quickly talk about repeaters real quick. These are often overlooked and completely under misunderstood, so fuck it, it gets a quick section in the video. A repeater is just another radio that is set up in such a way that it'll repeat a message. Well, revolutionary. This is very simplified, but actually basically what they do. Due to radio ranges, these can basically be used to boost a signal, repeating the message due to repeater location. These must be in the configuration of the original message. So if you're digital, you're going to need a digital capable repeater. If you're an analog, traditional repeaters will work just fine. When you communicate through a repeater, you tune into the repeater frequency, transmit, the repeater will receive and then repeat the transmission with a lag time. You, ultimately, most prepared citizens will find the utility of a repeater is to get a message area-wide for their unit or to talk to someone specifically far away. For full-blown collapse scenarios, assuming they haven't all just been sabotaged, you're going to want to be cautious in repeater usage. From our group, it gives us the ability to basically get our signals around bends in the mountains and to, uh, from the main city to out where we shoot, which is line of sighted by a large mountain range. This is probably one of the scenarios where getting a ham license is actually just mandatory. These are public utilities. Everyone can hear you talking up on these repeaters and completely shitting up a repeater because you have no understanding of how radio etiquette works or ham protocol is, is a great way to ruin it for everyone. Okay, that mostly covers what I wanted to talk about. Specifically, I wanted to talk about encryption, your type of communication. Basically, are you talking close range? Are you talking medium range? Are you talking long range? the amount of information contained within and how that can compromise you, right? With close range communications typically being pretty sterile of actionable information, even with someone with the fastest kill chain imaginable and long range information being incredibly compromising. We have tons of stories of people being completely destroyed because they said one wrong word on their long range communication. It was being observed and they got demolished. Then there's encryption. Encryption solves a lot of these issues, but be ready to go down a long and arduous path to learn how to set up encrypted radios. Because ultimately, yes, you could have someone else do it for you, but the end goal is to do it yourself so you can maintain your radio fleet personally. That is, like I said, a video for another time. It needs its entire own video to do that one, and that'll be next time. Finally, understand, in discussions online, and this is like my biggest pet peeve, it really depends who you're up against as to what radios are acceptable, what you can say is acceptable, and how badly you can get compromised for using a radio. Going up against civilians, generally speaking, you're pretty safe in a lot of scenarios. Going up against government forces, well, that's going to be a lot more spicy, but absolutely not my forte. And that's basically it. Hopefully this was helpful for you. This is absolutely kind of a part one. So a lot of you are going to watch this video and you're going to be like, wait, that's it? What about in practice? Yes, I know. We're going to get to that. I just don't like putting out 40 minute videos. So we're, we're going to cut this one short here. Remember next time I'll have it out and I'm actually working on that one right now. So it won't be like an eight month fucking break uh, since the last video. Okay. Bye. See ya. Nova's <laughs> I've tried to pee. Nova's very helpful. Nova, get him. Get him. Get him! Go get him! No, not me.